around about 26 years old, female, married. Yes. Married uh, one year with the history of hematemesis, pain, epigastric region, off and on. So let's start the ultrasound and see what is the basic problem. This is the liver. And the liver is in not that bad shape. Shows normalcy. You see that the liver angle it is sharp. Sharp liver angle. Normal current chimal echogenicity. These are this is the bubble shadow, bubble gas shadow. And uh, this is the IVC. Now you see that this is the diaphragm, normal current primary cogenicity, uh, small texture, bit like lumba sans, low se sans, lumba sans, lumba sans, lumba sans, lumba sans. Comparing the parenchymal leukogenicity of the uh, liver with that of the kidney, we see that uh, the both are with the normal. There's the parenchymal leukogenicity of the liver is slightly less as compared to that of the parenchymal leukogenicity of the right kidney. This is the right kidney in longitudinal section. So, there is the gallbladder. This is the gallbladder now. This is the gallbladder. And this is the portal vein. Ball better shows no, thick walls. Better go to Now what you see here is that yeah, these branching tubular structures. These branching tubular structures are basically the uh, these, you see one, two, three, these are the, uh, this is the recanalization of the portal vein or uh, cavernous transformation of the portal vein that we see in uh, cases of portal vein thrombosis. Now this is inferior vena cava in transfer section. So when I trace, we see, I see that the intrahepatic portion of the hepatic vein is showing cavernous transformation. This is the intrahepatic part showing cavernous transformation. This is the intrahepatic, this is the extrahepatic part and you can see that the lumen is significantly thinned out by earning only 8.1 millimeters and the no, a bit older, older. And the extra hepatic part, when you come towards this side, you will see the dilated uh, well, see you then. Here you, what you are seeing is the dilated portion of the extrahepatic portal vein, tortuous as well as dilated. This is the extrahepatic part of the portal vein which is tortuous and is dilated up to approximately, uh, is not dilated, may is 11.7. Well, now, Concentrating on this area, we see that now 
this is a trail of hypogenic area seen with the anterior wall of the Supreme Queen. This is the Supreme Queen and my years 11, uh, rather 11.8 millimeters is dilated as uh, more than uh, 10 is considered to be normal. It's 11.8, so dilated Supreme Queen with full effect flow level equals. Now this is the uh, superior mesenteric vein, this area, and this superior mesenteric vein is also not clear, it contains echoes. This portion is clear, and this is the pancreas, this area is the pancreas, pancreas is normal. So the superior mesenteric vein measures Fourteen point two and is dilated. Supreme vein is dilated. The pancreas is otherwise normal. This is the pancreatic tissue. Now here you see there is. This is the supreme and the supreme with supreme vein the supreme vein may have 15.4 from this region let me take the minimum possible now supreme vein may have 13.4 is dilated as more than 10 is considered to be a normal this is the supreme may approximately 17.9 cm from pole to pole should not exceed 12 and uh, here we see the wish to see the width then the width is 7.9 and in width supreme should not uh, exceed more than six centimeters so the supreme is enlarged both in from pole to pole and from uh, in width as well with dilated for the supreme vein the lumen of the supreme vein is clear no varices are seen the diaphragm is clear the patient is negative for hepatitis b c hiv When we come to the, towards the dependent region peritoneal cavity, we see that uh, there is, oh, yeah, this is the, actually this is the urinary bladder, this is the urinary bladder, and this is the ascitic fluid. Here you will see the ascitic fluid. This is a psychic fluid, this area has the bowel segments within it. So in the same patient we see minimal ascites in the dependent region peritoneal cavity. Here you see this is uh, the fluid and this patient is uh, pregnant as well. As you can see the pupus is enlarged. Pregnant. This is the yolk sac. And this is the fetal fold. The fetal fold may have approximately 1.5 centimeters, or you can say it may have, this is the yolk sac. This is the gestational sac and this is the fetus. You can see the cardiac activity if you concentrate on this region. So, fetus is alive. Here is 
you can see the waveform. So the waveform is normal, uh, <coughs> regular, normal variation. Now the cardiac activity is approximately 170 beats per minute. Patient is very tense while I am scanning her and as uh, she will be tense, so it is uh, quite natural that the heart rate of the fetus will also uh, go up. So this is a case of uh, non-thrombotic, non-serotic extra hepatic portal vein thrombosis in a young female age 26 years with hepatic weight, uh, hepatic vein uh, recanalization. Now as the IVC and the hepatic veins can be seen, this is the middle hepatic vein. This is the middle hepatic vein and uh, therefore the butt carry syndrome is ruled out as a possible cause of this findings. So, the canalization of the portal vein, dilated uh, portal supplenic confluence, dilated supplenic vein, as you can see, this is the supplenic vein, this is the superior mesentery vein. There are no para aortic lymph nodes, dilated supplenic, sorry, enlarged supplenic, dilated supplenic vein, and uh, ascites with eight weeks, weeks pregnant, uh, eight weeks pregnancy with a, a large fetus. Thank you.